I guess we can start. Uh, hello and uh, welcome to today's webinar. I'm thrilled to have you all here with us. My name is Lana and I'm a business development manager with N Progression. Today's webinar will all about um, optimizing Navision platform and also some of uh, tips and tricks will be about Business Central uh, platform. And uh, by the end of this session, uh, you will gain insights into a powerful um, into powerful tools how to optimize your current platform without any migrations uh, to the cloud or how to uh, optimize your uh, cloud platform also. So uh, and I hope that uh, these tools will help your business achieve better business results. This uh, webinar will, will last approximately 30 of uh, 45 minutes and uh, I will be taking questions after the presentation at the QS session or you can put uh, your questions in our chat and we will discuss on them in the QA part. So I want to introduce our today's speakers uh, here with us, Alek Richkovsky. He's our uh, lead architect. Um, he has uh, great, really huge experience in implementation and supporting uh, Navision and Business Central platform. He is in uh, Microsoft ecosystem more than 20 years and with a huge experience in pharmaceutical, pharma, uh, in, in pharmaceutical FMCG, fi financial and other industry um, experience. And uh, our second speaker is Alex Ignatkin. He is a lead and uh, he's a lead consultant and uh, head of department of Business Central um, and, uh, and NAV platform. And he is Hi. also our lead expert and lead consultant in uh, Business Central practice. And uh, <clears throat> today uh, our experts will share their insights on uh, our main theme and um, I guess that it will be really <coughs> helpful and insightful, sorry. <coughs> so let's continue. Um, I will continue with today's agenda. Um, firstly, of course, I will present our company introduction. Um, there is also our second part, uh, which will be about our quick preview of, of our next webinars because Today's webinar is um, it's our first in first webinar in a series uh, which we will uh, provide to our uh, participants, to our audience, and uh, we will hope that um, everybody will join on our next webinars also. Uh, so at our third part, we will uh, discuss successful result, results of platform optimization within real cases. Uh, and um, as I mentioned before, we will um, answer your questions and uh, take your feedback on our webinar. And also uh, one of the most important things um, of this webinar is to gain um, is to gain your um, issues, your problems which you have uh, with with your current platforms, and we want to discover the most popular and interesting issues for the potential webinars in our series. Also, so uh, let's start with first one, and I would like to introduce our company and progression and progression is a leader software and IT integrator company uh, which is focused on uh, Microsoft ecosystem mostly we implement upgrade support migrate such solutions as Dynamics 365 including uh, Microsoft um, 365 Business Central uh, and NAV platform, uh, which is the main um, theme for today. And uh, also we uh, work with other um, platforms and solutions, which is based on cloud for sustainability, Azure and Power Platform. Uh, we have a great experience in uh, <clears throat> Uh, Europe and uh, UK market, and uh, we provide the um, the, and our main um, focus that we provide uh, excellent uh, services within all uh, Microsoft stack. So um, let's uh, go to our main theme for today. Uh, and uh, I 
give some uh, speech to Alex. Alex, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Lana, for your introduction. Uh, before we'll proceed with lots of details, I wanted to describe you a few cases uh, uh, which could be um, a bit uh, interesting for you. The first case is uh, about Troika Dialog. It's an um, asset management company where trade uh, financial instruments, uh, derivatives and so forth. And in peak, we have near uh, four or uh, five million uh, entries uh, per, per day. Uh, per day. It's a huge uh, uh, amount of uh, data and we need to consolidate all this data, transform and provide different procedure kind of regulation to the market. So it's a very work, uh, word, uh, workload um, uh, activity and also we need to uh, create all batch of reports related to the IFRS. Uh, the next case is uh, as we run leasing. It's a huge leasing company. We have near 1,000 deals per day. Uh, the lifetime of one deal at average is uh, near 10 years. And during this uh, period, you need to recalculate uh, payment schedule. And uh, it's a very um, a complex business process, uh, time consuming, and uh, you need to create uh, some specific report uh, for the government and so forth, and uh, it's a very workload system. Next case, it's uh, a regular, it's a network of uh, pharmacies. Uh, it includes near 3,000 uh, pharmacies. And uh, for example, if you're going to the pharmacy and going to buy some drug uh, out of this process, uh, near five entries takes place. And uh, this company has a task to aggregate all these data. Uh, and we uh, have near six million entries uh, per month. And also we have near 10 uh, batches, which we need to launch on this data to just uh, update this information according to the IFRS standards. And finally receive all batch of the reports required to the IFRS. As the next case is uh, gross retail. We have near 200 supermarkets. Uh, we have uh, their own uh, manufacturing. They have their own cafes. So uh, lots of data here. And uh, for example, today we need to calculate uh, cost uh, provide cost calculation for the items, and uh, that's uh, lots of data in the system. Uh, all that unite all these cases is that all these companies uh, all works on uh, their ERP system for more than 10 years without any uh, critical issues related to the performance. So uh, we've done some optimization uh, activities and uh, this is why uh, we significantly extend the uh, lifetime of their current system. So next we will go to the details and Alec told you uh, about tips and trips how you can uh, extend the life uh, cycle of your product. Thank you, Alec. Well, hello. Um, usually when your system is uh, launched, it begins to grow. It will begin grow to grow uh, as in a horizontal direction, for example, it's uh, amount of posted data, and in vertical direction, it is amount of items which you want to analyze. Uh, it is absolutely normal, and uh, all what you need to do is to manage this issue to uh continue uh, to provide good workload for your system uh next typical issue is non-optimal sql server application server configuration of hardware or software part uh, also often problem is uh, when you 
requirements are grown within your systems and uh, those those requirements uh, should be processed uh, within uh, your current database uh, specifics. Uh, wrong approach to business logic is also very usual problem. Uh, usually there was uh, problems uh, on pre-production, on stage of uh, analysis, of design, and uh, as far as your system will grow, uh, number of users will grow also. And when quantity of users will uh, grow, you will get problems with uh, logs and user concurrency. It is also absolutely normal. It is uh, normal to any transaction-based database. Uh, you just need to manage these cases. Um, typically, there are several directions to be optimized. First is the usual root of every problem is a bad code. Code should be reviewed, uh, optimized, and then your system can gain uh, much more performance than before. Uh, second part is indexes. Indexes is a basis of uh, every database. Uh, indexes have a direct impact of, on um, your performance. So indexes uh, should be maintained too, and uh, they must be correctly designed. Um, when your database is grown, then you will get problems uh, with uh, processes which are dependent on the uh, data amount. For example, such as cost, it didn't program cost correction uh, or any big reports which are usually run on everyday basis. The more database size is, then um, such processes uh, run uh, slowly and slowly. Slower and slower. Uh, next is uh, long transactions. It is usual problem uh, when database has uh, many active users. Then the logging problems and uh, long transaction problem occurs. Uh, there are several strategies of management which will be discussed on later webinar series. Uh, also, big data processing can be done on the SQL side. It is much more better to move all calculations outside of NAV. We will we'll look on it closer on our next uh, webinars. If your database is grown and you don't need to look on old for example, 10 years, uh, 12 years uh, data, you just can uh, do database compression. After that, your database uh, will be small and will run very fast. And all old data will be compressed in several inbound operations. And if your system use third-party analytic services, uh, the services can be moved on separate databases, uh, which are usually read-only. It is usually uh, mirrors of operating database. And then this uh, third-party services can read from this database and it can uh, give more performance to operational database because uh, there will be no uh, read operations from those systems in operational database. Um, 
typically problems in code uh, can be reviewed on the on-demand basis. When you get problem, you solve this problem. Uh, if your system have uh, some rollout stages, then uh, code should be reviewed before rolling on uh, production system. Uh, also, very good idea is to use uh, smoke tests and uh, automatic test suits to uh, make sure that new code will not affect uh, database performance. Uh, indexes should be maintained uh, on usual basis. Uh, analysis of index usage can be done uh, on demand. When you get some problems, uh, you can take a look on indexes and fix something in them. And also, uh, database compression can be done, for example, every one or two years, or if uh, your database will grow to some big size. Uh, server configuration should be checked uh, after every maintenance, and when something uh, is altered in configuration, also. Uh, health of uh, database for external system can be also done on demand. And if you will use uh, external data processing on a SQL site, uh, then there will be uh, there must be possibility to switch this feature on and off, and the system architect uh, must uh, get decision about. Uh, moving this uh, processing on external side. Uh, here is another slide about this. Mm, Alexey? Yes, uh, here I can uh, give uh, more details about some specific cases. I told before that uh, Regla is a um, uh, net of 3000 pharmacies and uh, we've done here compression, data compression uh, for the data which load uh, uh, older than uh, two years. And um, you know that in this database uh, there are near 150 uh, uh, companies in this database, so it's uh, huge companies, uh, big uh, pharmacies, and uh, we compress the data. Yeah, and if uh, at the beginning the database size was uh, near seven uh, terabytes, but uh, after compression it takes only uh, two terabytes. And uh, that's mean that all engagement uh, reporting and all up coop with this data works much more faster. Um, actually, uh, we uh, renew the database and it works as it was uh, several years ago. It's uh, one of the uh, popular uh, method of uh, database optimization. Um, the next slide. Second. So uh, next slide about uh, um, three of our cases. Uh, some of them I already mentioned before. And uh, here's the key uh, feature is that we use uh, multiple uh, NAS, uh, um, uh, NAS uh, application servers uh, to automate different activities in parallel uh, or in queue just to um, avoid situation when different users uh, block each other. Uh, we put some uh, posting process in background and uh, we uh, reduce the risks of uh, deadlocks in the system 
And as a result, our management shows that at average, uh, we improve posting process in 10 times. It's a huge value uh, before if uh, different users uh, try to do the same at uh, one moment, we've got some locks and the problems with the system. And now if a uh, document is ready to post, they just put to the queue and system automatically post all these uh, documents or transactions in the background mode. So it works very well. Uh, next case is, is about uh, Rigo and uh, Vertzela. Um, he is um, about um, that analysis. Uh, for example, um, uh, Rigo works on uh, dynamics in AV, and we've made compression in this database, uh, but all uh, reporting was available through all lab system with the client in Excel file. And uh, this, this is uh, one way how we can uh, do compression. The other case with compression, it's Vertile. Uh, we have done uh, compression in the work database, uh, but uh, for some uh, analytical reasons, we wanted to have access to the most detailed uh, data in the previous periods. Uh, for this scenario, we create uh, archive database with all detailization for uh, all years, uh, but in production database, uh, we provide uh, uh, aggregation data uh, which older than uh, two years or so. So as a result, OLAPCOOP for reporting purpose works with uh, different databases. But production uh, database uh, uh, became much more lighter and works much more faster. So this is some details about our latest experience. That's it for me now. Alec. Uh, so this uh, was a brief uh, overview of uh, several optimization ideas of uh, optimization issues and all of uh, this and much more will, will be shown in our next four webinars. Uh, first of them uh, will be about NAV and SQL. How does NAV works with SQL directly? How SQL works itself, uh, configuration hints, server optimization hints, uh, database structure on your disk system, uh, some features about uh, disk management, about uh, database file management. Uh, we will show uh, several ideas and um, real cases how to um, make SQL to calculate data for a Navy. For example, uh, some processes can be optimized much more than in 1000 times because in NAV you calculate something one after another, but when SQL calculation you can calculate very much of uh, data parallel in parallel um, how to optimize now routines with SQL uh, how to move analytic uh, tasks to mirror database uh, there will be also some feature like smart SQL it is uh, a feature in uh, NAV 2013 up to 2018. And also we will uh, briefly overview some very interesting feature like use enumerators sequences uh, in uh, posting routines. It is a very interesting 
idea how to uh, do posting routines without any logs at all. Uh, second webinar will be about indexes, about indexes and calculated fields, of so-called flow fields. Uh, there I will, I will tell how indexes uh, physically working, how flow fields physically working. Uh, we will uh, take a look how to design correct indexes, how to make the, their quantity as small as possible because every additional index uh, affects database uh, operational speeds very much. Uh, there are several correct and incorrect usages of indexes. Um, even very uh, much of developers do some errors when working with indexes. Uh, also, indexes uh, should be designed in the uh, most universal way as possible to cover um, as uh, much case usages as possible. Uh, we will take a look how calculated fields uh, affect uh, database speed, uh, how to maintain indexes, how to redesign indexes uh, when your database is grown, because uh, there can be changes in requirements. So index uh, redesign is uh, absolutely usual thing. And how to find uh, missing indexes and detect code issues where the indexes are used incorrect. Third meeting will be about system scaling, about database growth, about uh, workloads, and how to make big databases work smoothly and fast. Uh, I'll tell about uh, problems which uh, are specific to big databases, uh, how to keep your system health and fast, uh, how to manage with uh, database growth, with user quantity growth, uh, with user concurrency, with logs, with uh, transactions, uh, how partitioning can help uh, your database, how compression can help your database. Uh, also, very interesting thing is using big integers like uh, numerators in ledgers. We will also uh, look on it in this meeting. Uh, time consuming processes, how to make uh, some periodical tasks to run fast so with moving calculations outside of NAV. Uh, log management and uh, code optimization, how to correctly develop uh, system code to make it uh, ready for big data amounts. And last meeting will be about logs and transactions and user concurrency. Uh, how concurrency can make your system, in fact, work in single user mode. It is very often problem. Uh, how to uh, avoid uh, some user issues when users, for example, pressing button and have an error message that other user have uh, changed record, please uh, restart the activity. Uh, lock minimizing uh, using primary keys to uh, filter data 
to avoid log escalation on SQL side. Uh, how to manage with transactions with uh, commits with uh, log escalation uh, and how to use sequences. It is very interesting thing. Uh, instead of using standard NAV numeration such as find last record, log database and uh, add something to this last value. Uh, so this will be what we will take a look on our next webinars. And also, if you have some ideas, some questions, uh, some issues, you can uh, give it to us and we will uh, take a look on it in our next meetings. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Alec, for your expertise sharing. I hope that everybody uh, can add some more themes for the next webinars. It will be great for us and for all of us. So, um, and yes, uh, the next one, it's, it will be, so we um, come to are coming to our Q&A sessions and uh, it will be great if you ask us anything, if you have any issues, problems, if you want to highlight your point of growth of your current system, you can um, ask us in the chat or just uh, raise your hand and we will discuss on it. Or if you um, want to take some some time on, on on thinking um, how it will be, uh, in which way um, to connect with us uh, for um, uh, to be more productive uh, for um, asking us um, exactly questions. Um, you can come back to us, um, to Alec or to Alex. We will share uh, our experience on your problem, on your issues, and it will be also great. By the way, uh, we will have, um, as I mentioned before, we will have um, several more webinars on this theme, on uh, our main theme, uh, on platform optimization. And you will um, come back to us uh, with, with additional uh, moments uh, and we will add these uh, issues to these next webinars also. So, uh, Alex, would you add uh, some additional moments? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you are right that uh, there are lots of aspects of uh, performance optimization. And if you will receive some details from you, we can focus on uh, your particular tasks and uh, that will be much more helpful for you. Uh, and this is why don't shy, uh, write us and we will uh, adapt our further webinars according to your requests. That's it for me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So great, yes. Uh, so feel free to come back uh, to us with your um, problems, with your aspects, and uh, we will be happy to connect with you and work with you together on it. So um, let's look on our chat. If there is no questions, we will finish our today's webinar and uh, we will come back to all our part today's participants with a new data on uh, on upcoming webinars. And uh, of course, we will share this uh, presentation with you all, uh, as well. And um, thank you all for um, for your participation in our event. We will be happy to uh, see any questions uh, in the nearest week or several weeks. Uh, if you will, will come back to us with it. So thank you all. Thank you, thank Alec you. and Alex. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.